All right, so last time I talked about life as a walk-on and my decision to transfer from Michigan. Today, I'm gonna talk about the transfer portal and just how I ended up at Utah State because it's kind of a story. But first, yo, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss videos like this moving forward. And then also in the comments, let me know what other questions y'all got about either life as a college athlete, story times you wanna hear, things of that nature, because six years of college football, got a lot of information, a lot of stories to tell, but let's stop wasting time, let's get to the video. But before I talk about me, we gotta talk about the transfer portal because it's a lot fans out there, even players out there do not understand about it. So we gotta clear those up so that way my story makes a little more sense. So the most important thing to know is that there are a bunch of reasons that people enter the portal. Like I know a lot of fans will see it and think it's because of NIL off rip, but there are a lot of reasons. And while there are a lot of reasons, I think for this video, it's best that we break it down into three groups. The first group, we're gonna call them up transfers. The second group, we're gonna call them lateral transfers. The third group, we're gonna call them down transfers. So they're all pretty self-explanatory, but an up transfer is someone that transfers from a lower level to a higher level. So think someone like Jared Verse transferring from Albany to Florida State. Usually these guys are younger and they're earlier in their college careers. And these are kind of the ones you see get influenced by NIL a little more because, you know, bigger schools, they'll see someone at a smaller school, think, oh, they can help us immediately and they'll try and poach them. You also see players who were highly decorated at either FCS schools or group of five schools. They'll also be up transfers as grad transfers and go to a P5 school that wants a steadier option, more of a veteran option to turn to. And that's where you see those up transfers as well. Now, lateral transfers, those are guys who transfer from one school of similar standing to another. So think someone like Quinn Ewers transferring from Ohio State to Texas. Jamison Williams transferring from Ohio State to Alabama is another example. The thing with these guys is it's not usually a skill set thing. They're kind of a whole host of reasons. This is the one that has the most ambiguity to it. So you have coaching staff changes. You have guys just being kind of buried at the depth chart at one school because that school is loaded. Case in point, the 2021 Ohio State receiver roster absolutely insane so Jamison Williams he wasn't a bad player it's not like he didn't belong at you know the highest level of college football it was just that being in that environment wasn't going to be the best for him so transferred to Alabama and see how that turned out and then finally you have probably the biggest category but it's down transfers so players who are at one level usually it's for playing time reasons decide to transfer down and get more playing time at a different school that's kind of bringing it down broadly Yes, there are more extenuating circumstances that lead guys to enter the portal, but we're not going to discuss those right now, but it'll be too long. But next, I also want to give some tips for people thinking about entering the portal or who have already entered it. The first tip is if you were not a high recruit, and I'm talking high four star, five star, your high school pedigree does not matter after one year. If you hit the portal because of a lack of playing time after one year and you're expecting the same coaches that were calling you when you were in high school to keep calling you, it's not gonna happen. They have a quick memory, a short memory, and a lot of the top schools, they're focused on high school, not the portal necessarily, especially guys that they don't think can contribute right away in the portal, so they're not gonna pay you any mind. Second tip is understand why a coach is pursuing you. I've seen a lot of guys get brought on visits, coaches sweet talking to them, whole time the coach just really wants a backup plan, an insurance plan, just in case one of their younger guys that has a lot of potential doesn't work out, and he ends up working out, and then you see a guy just ride the bench the entire time at his new school because the coach basically finessed him. And then tip three is gonna be, make sure you enter the portal for the right reasons. Now, NIL is this great thing, you feel me? I literally advocated on ESPN for college players to have NIL rights. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure most of y'all, really all of y'all should, but most of y'all are playing college football to actually play college football. Now. You're getting a couple hundred, couple extra thousand a month, but you're on the sideline. I ain't gonna lie, I don't. I think I'd rather be playing than uh, you know money and be on the bench. But maybe that's just me. Like I came to the realization that yo, it's hard to play college football at any level. Like you should be proud if you're playing P5, G5, FCS, you know D2, D3, NAIA. Like any level of college football you're playing, it's a difficult thing to do. So don't give that up because you have other things that aren't the main thing in mind. Tip number four is make sure you compile all your film before you leave the school because once you leave, you're not gonna have access to literally anything that you did before. So what I did was I made sure to compile all my film the day, two days before I was gonna actually enter the portal when I already knew I was leaving and made myself a highlight tape. And it doesn't have to be all game film. I use about half game film, half practice film, but any film you have is better than nothing so make sure you're getting your practice clips if you know you're about to enter the portal before you actually enter it 
so that way you're not trying to scramble tip number five do not wait in the portal now while coaches are going to be recruiting you heavily sweet talking you if you're not like a top top guy just know that the spot they're offering you they're going to offer it to someone else too so if you take too long mulling your options or you're waiting for a better offer just know that that player other player they offered they might get impatient with you allow him to commit and now you don't have a place to go and you're stuck in the portal and i forgot the exact statistic i'll put it up here but Yo, there's some crazy number of players that get left in the portal. Like, you do not want to be one of them. Trust me. Yo, Editor Hunt here. I actually missed on a couple things. So I want to just give two more tips. But they're going to be don't run from the grind and the grass ain't always greener. Now, there are definitely valid depth chart reasons for transferring. You know, in my case, just wanting to play more and not be a role player. That's one of them. But sometimes you see guys who are freshmen, sophomore, who their time's coming. They just got to be patient and keep putting the work in. But they get a little antsy, decide to leave and put themselves in a worse situation. You know, that's running from the grind. You don't want to do that. And then always remember, like, there's going to be some issue at every school. Like, every school, players have something that they're going to gripe about. So if you're upset with something at your school and you think the next school you transfer to, everything's going to be perfect, like, you're sadly mistaken, just don't fall into that trap. Just understand that, like I said, the grass ain't always greener. It's always going to be some issue you're going to have at every school. But enough of the generic portal talk. Let's talk about what my journey was. So like I said in my last video, which... Go oh, by the way, go watch that so you understand the context for this story. With everything that happened during spring ball, once I knew it was time to jump in the portal, like I, I just knew. It's actually a pretty simple process. Like you literally fill out a couple, actually you don't have to go there. You literally, there's like a compliance form that your school has on like one of the forms websites. I think ours was on Teamworks or something like that. You literally just fill the form out, click submit and you're in the portal. But a couple of days before I entered the portal, I made sure to compile my film so that way I had a highlight tape to send out to coaches and it was about half game film, half practice film. Uh, some of, because in Michigan we scrimmage a lot. So luckily there was a lot of me tackling, me actually playing football against other highly talented, highly talented players. But yeah, so I had, you know, two minute highlight tape and was kind of just hoping for the best. So that was April 5th. And I did not remember that off the top of my head. I literally just looked it up. But that was on April 5th. And I literally had no idea what to expect. Now I had some film, which is more than a lot of people who enter the portal have but at the same time it's not like i was a star player i started my career off as a walk-on so i wasn't really sure what to expect you know i wasn't sure if i was going to stay at the p5 level drop down to g5 drop down to fcs but in my head i was like i don't really care i just want to have an opportunity to go somewhere and be able to play a lot of football so what a lot of people don't realize is the transfer portal is like actually a literal portal of sorts and i saw it from my coaches at utah state one of them showed me but basically, once you send that form to your compliance office, your name gets entered into a database that coaches are literally checking every five minutes. So your email, your Twitter, your phone number, I don't know if it's the phone number, but your email and Twitter definitely, they're all fair game, they're all out there for all the coaches. And literally within the hour of me entering the portal, I was getting followed and DMs from coaches at schools around the country. Now, I actually remember the first school that had multiple people from it start following me on Twitter was West Virginia. So I'm thinking, all right, you know, Big 12 football. They don't really play defense down there, but you know, it is what it is. I'll, I'll go down, go down to uh, Morgantown, West Virginia and ball out. But for anyone who wasn't highly recruited, you know the feeling of when it looks like you're gonna start getting some traction and then absolutely nothing happens. Like a couple coaches followed me. I think one of them DM me, uh, DM'd them back and literally got left on left on open so in those first couple of days i was getting a bunch of follows bunch of dms from a bunch of different coaches sending my film out just trying to keep open lines of communication with anybody so that way i had a home to to play at and i think it's from my time as a walk-on being a walk-on in high school but i just did not allow myself to get my hopes up for anything every time a coach dm me or talks to me in the back of my mind i was like he's not gonna offer you he's just gonna dm you for a little bit talk to you for a little bit and then move on to the to the next person so i i think it, it was definitely the conditioning in my head it was just funny how i literally did not expect any good thing to happen to me during this time but once it hit day three four that's when the schools who were much more interested much more serious started really communicating with me so i remember the first school that was actually there was serious communication with was james madison and i knew a bunch of dudes from jersey that went there so i knew about the program i knew how strong it was and i knew it was one of the best fcs programs in the country so 
I was like, all right, if I go to James Madison, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Now, I mean, I was on the phone with the coaches, talking to the DC, the safeties coach, and this was, mind you, like I said, I was a walk-on. So I wasn't really used to this level of, I guess, want from a school. So it, it, like, it felt good. Like being, I didn't have the kind of natural, the general, the typical recruiting journey. So being recruited for once, actually felt you know it gave me a sense of not validation but it it made me feel like i i was i'm a player who people should want to have on their team but anyways then probably day five ish i get a dm from the safeties ga at utah state coach morris ethan morris my guy still to this day and he said ah what did he say he said something along the lines of Yo, disregard the record you saw last year. We got a new staff. We got something special cooking up here. Now, I knew Utah State was in the Mountain West. I didn't really know much about the state of Utah at all. Didn't really know much about the Mountain West or even Utah State for real. I just knew that the Mountain West has good football, good football teams, a lot of good players. A lot of players made it from the Mountain West to the NFL. So, like I said before, I just really wanted a place to ball. So, a couple days go by. There's even more communication. There's more conversations had and then eventually the defensive coordinator asked for my number because he wants to set up a call so i get on a call with the defensive coordinator Ephraim bonda and so we get on the call and it's all pretty typical stuff my strengths and weaknesses as a player defensive schemes the state of utah how the team's not going to be as bad as it was last year and then coach bonda asked me so you've never been offered before in your life and being a walk-on i was like no never and he said, well, I'm happy to happy to be your first. Now, I'm not an emotional person or anything. It's not like I shed tears, but um, it was definitely a good feeling. It was for two reasons. The first one was a weight just felt lifted off my shoulders because I knew I had a place to, to transfer to and I wasn't going to be stuck in the portal like so many other people have been in the past. But then also because being a walk-on, you've always had this feeling of, damn, like no one kind of really wanted me. And to feel wanted by a college coach to play football that kind of validated my skill set it felt like validated all the hard work I put in so it was definitely a great feeling but I wasn't going to just commit to the first school to give me an offer so I told him you know thank thank you thankful for it but uh I'm, I'm gonna take a couple more days to weigh my options wait on my decision now what I didn't tell you guys was at this same time the Minnesota's corners coach was actually in heavy contact with me and was talking to me probably a couple times a day for maybe a week straight. So the story with that is my man's Ben St. Juice. He's with the Commanders right now. We were at Michigan together. He transferred a couple years earlier. He graduated before I did. But he transferred to Minnesota, played there for two years, and did well, third-round draft pick. So the coach asked him about me, and he said, you know, great player, phenomenal guy, definitely someone you want to have on the team. So I got on a call with this Minnesota coach, similar to the one I got on with, uh, Coach Bonda, and he's basically telling me how they plan to use me, how they really like the skills that I bring, how they like the coverage I played, and kind of everything they've heard about me from players and coaches. And so I'm thinking, yo, I'm off to Minnesota. Like, it's lit. My mans went there, balled out. I'm going to go there, ball out. And this, remember before when I said I didn't get my hopes up? This was the first time I got my hopes up about something. Like, I was actually looking at apartments in Minneapolis. That's how certain I was I was going to go to Minnesota. So I remember we had a conversation. I think it was on a Thursday or a Friday. No, it was Thursday. So he basically told me that he was going to go. They were going to have a whole staff meeting as a defense. And on Monday, he was going to come back and offer me because that's when the coach, like the head coach, the DC, were going to sign off on my recruitment. Now, I'm a person that keeps my phone on silent. I even have it on Do Not Disturb a lot of the time. But that Monday, I best believe my phone ringer was up all the way so i wake up check my phone no notification you know go do some stuff go work out go eat check my phone again at noon still no notification check it again at three still no notification and i'm like yo they're, they're like a couple they're like an hour behind i think you know maybe they're just on different time they got practice and stuff you know I, I, it's all good so it hits about 10 o'clock looking at my phone i'm like damn He's not gonna call, is he? Like, I was halfway expecting, like, a, yo, you're gonna hate me type of text, but I ain't even get that. Like, literally, that conversation we had 
the Thursday before, that was the last conversation I ever had with them. So I was like, well, this is exactly why you don't get your hopes up, Hunt. Like, just gonna come crashing down every single time. But I was like, all right, it's cool though, you feel me? I got the Utah State offer. It's not even like I was looking at it as a fallback option. I was just looking at it as another option. And I also knew at Minnesota, at a school, like once you start kind of transferring within, you know, the Big Ten, ACC, Pac-12, Big 12, all the P5 conferences, once you get, once you're transferring as an older guy, there's always the possibility that they're just bringing you in as a depth option, like I said before. And I didn't want to be, the whole reason I was transferring from Michigan was because I didn't want to be a depth option. So in the back of my head, I think it was, I kind of looked at it as a blessing that it didn't come to fruition. So that way I didn't have to be in a position where I made a decision that I regretted by transferring somewhere and ending up basically in the same situation. So after I got the offer from Utah State and after everything with Minnesota fell through, I was still having contact with other coaches. And the big thing I ran into was because of the timing of my transfer, which was in the middle of spring ball, a lot of coaches wanted to wait till after spring ball to kind of see how their safety situation was, how they really liked their guys. And like I said before, being stuck in the portal was the absolute last thing I wanted to have happen to me. So I, you know, I communicated with them. I kept talking to them, but in the back of my head, I was like, if they don't make an offer soon, I'm not just going to sit here waiting till the end of spring ball to hopefully have something come up. And then Utah state, they offer someone else who accepts. And then I'm, you know, left ass out. So about three days before I said a, Kind of silent commitment date so i basically told my parents i was like all right these three days if nothing else happens i'm just gonna go ahead commit to utah state make that move i'm headed out to head out to utah so some of the other schools i was talking to i basically told them i was like yo i'm trying to hurry up and get this all over with i'm not trying to just be sitting here waiting and they were moving slow they were kind of sitting on their hands and that's what i knew i was like all right well i'm wanted at utah state i'm needed at utah state Let's go ahead and just make that move. So I called my parents, told them, yo, I'll make the decision. I'm going to Utah State. They were 100% with it. They were on board. So then I called Bonda. It's like, yo, coach, I'm, uh, I'm going to be an Aggie. Let's go win the championship. And from there, the rest was kind of history. And I think the funniest thing about the whole, my whole transfer portal thing too, is that we were still, like, they were still dealing with COVID. Mind you, the whole reason I was transferring from Michigan was because I caught COVID. So it's not, I didn't even take a visit. Like I'm a kid from Jersey playing college football in Michigan. And I just made a decision to transfer to school in Utah. Like it, it, I, I definitely did not know what I was in for. And I know I've joked about Utah before on my social media pages, but it was definitely a change of environment, change of scenery. But at the same time, I, it was definitely cool to live there, cool to live somewhere else that's just completely different than what you're used to. I mean, Jersey, you're right next to New York, Michigan. Ann Arbor's really like a, it's much more closer to a city than it is to kind of being rural. Utah State was kind of in the middle of nowhere. So it like being in a town like Logan, I never experienced anything like that, but I definitely enjoyed it. The people in Logan were phenomenal. The fans were great. The players I played with, love them to death. Coaches, love them to death too. It, like, it was definitely a move that, in hindsight, I'm so happy everything worked out the way it did because I th truly think I made the best decision that I could have made in that situation. So that's pretty much the story of how a walk-on through University of Michigan ended up going to Utah State. But if you guys have any more questions, remember, drop them in the comments, you feel me? That's kind of how this video even came about because people asked in the comments about it. But yeah, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next time.